from Las Vegas. At night, you can see the city lights from five miles away. I know. That's how far into the desert we were when Dave made me get out and walk. It's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, comedian Rip Taylor, crossbow artist Hans Matar, the Sackett Twins, and Paul Schaefer and the band. And now, a man who is fully accredited and licensed by the Nevada Gaming Commission to introduce headlining entertainers, Larry Bud Melman! to have any kind of job whatsoever. <laughs> Luckily, the job I have is an easy one, to introduce a man whose name is clearly spelled out on the cue cards in front of me, David Letterman! <laughs> Now, now, if I only had an act, we'd really. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, how about a uh, how about a nice hand for the young girls from uh, Las Vegas Girl Scouts at number 84? Later, uh, later in the show, Paul and I will be inspecting those headdresses for mites. So stay tuned. <laughs> Uh, welcome to the uh, program, ladies and gentlemen. It's Las Vegas. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. Which, which one do I look like, Jan or Dean? Which is it exactly? <laughs> you dressed very non-Vegas today, didn't you? <laughs> I don't know. Very casual. Um, anyway, um, what are we doing here? Something, something really odd happened to me this morning. I'm coming here to the hotel, Bally's where we're taping this, and uh, I see this guy standing in front of the casino. Seemed like a nice enough guy, uh, I don't know, like mid-30s or so, and he's, he's kind of depressed, and he comes up to me and he says, excuse me, Mr. Letterman, can I borrow from you like $100? <laughs> he said, because my wife is not well, and I need the $100 for some medicine, and hopefully, thank God, maybe she'll improve if we have the money to buy the medicine. I said, geez, you know, uh, I, I, of course I would love to help you out, but what guarantee do I have now if I give you the hundred bucks that you won't take it right there into the casino and spend it on gambling? Just blow it completely. Gamble it away. And the guy looks at me and he says, oh, I got gambling money. <laughs> The Las Vegas audiences are the most beautiful audiences in the world, aren't yeah. they, Bob? Yeah! <laughs> so, so he looks at me and he says, oh, I got gambling money. Uh, take a look at this show. Boy, we've slapped together an extravaganza for you today. Uh, Rip Taylor will be with us tonight. And uh, the Saka twins will be here. Is it Saka or Saka? Saka? Saka. And 
And uh, also a gentleman who does something very, uh, very strange, uh, very interesting and very dangerous with a crossbow, Hans Pantar. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Is it time to do the top ten? Yeah. All right, let's uh, may I have the... the Las Vegas PTA, one of the ladies who <laughs> volunteering here. <clears throat> I'll see you at the library, Courtney. Thank you so much. Oh, uh oh. You know, ladies and gentlemen, before uh, I do the top ten list, as we always start the program with, from the home office in Scottsdale, Arizona. The <laughs> I want to, uh, the great thing about working in Las Vegas is you get superstars from all over the world who will come and see other shows for other performers. Am I right about this, Paul? This is correct. And tonight is certainly no exception. We are very lucky indeed to have a terrifically talented gentleman visiting our program tonight, and he's soon to open down the street at the Riviera Hotel. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together, make him feel at home, international recording star, Mr. Jerry Vale. Jerry, stand up. I don't look right, Paul. Not nice. Well, you're not exactly dressed for... You're dressed very similar to the, to the audience, though. Is it the hair or the shirt? <laughs> you look great. You look, I wish Here you we looked... go. From the home office in Scottsdale, Arizona. Tonight's category, top ten non-gambling activities in Las Vegas. <laughs> top ten non-gambling activities. Here we go. Number ten. Antiquing. <laughs> Number nine, searching the desert for insects enlarged by radiation. <laughs> Number eight, marrying Joan Collins. We ought to get in line for that one, Paul. Uh, number seven, discussing haiku with a pit boss. Number six, driving a wedge of suspicion between Siegfried and Roy. Number five, cruising the strip looking for Amish tourists. <laughs> Number four, pretending to be an IRS agent and shaking down grandmothers at nickel slots. Number three, eating 25 cent shrimp cocktails. No, I'm sorry, that is a gambling activity. Number two, rewiring giant cowboy signs so it gives tourists the finger. And the number one, non-gambling activity here in Las Vegas, calling security when Red Fox wanders into your hotel room. Precision piece of equipment that is, isn't it? <laughs> let's uh, let's take a second here to introduce our good friend, Mr. Paul Schaefer. Paul, say hello to the folks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me take a very quick minute to introduce the cats that I brought from New York to entertain out here in Vegas. On my far right, Mr. Sid McGinnis came out with yeah, us. Sid. Right beside him on the bottom, we got him. Mr. Will Lee came with us. How about it for Anton Fig on the drum? You know it. You know when you hit this town, you gotta hit them with something special. That's why I brought these cats. The Uptown Horns from New York are with us. Come on, they're great. Thanks to Greg Adams for that happening arrangement on the theme, by the way. And uh, this man is with me once a week, and uh, I can't get rid of him. No, no, seriously, folks, we're really thrilled that you came with us out to Las Vegas. How about it for Mr. David Sanborn? Yeah. Thank you very much. Boy. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, gentlemen. Nice to have you here. Uh, okay, you're asking yourself, what is the biggest problem facing most Las Vegas visitors? Well, that's easy. It's deciding how to spend their giant winnings from the gambling tables. <laughs> 
So tonight, as a public service, we've assembled an assortment of beautiful new products, all of them with that special Las Vegas touch that so clearly says, I don't care how I spend my dough. <laughs> Here we go. Bring it in, boys. Can we? Where are they? We'll be, we'll be with you in a few minutes. Here we go. This is only a test, ladies and gentlemen. Now would be a good time to order that pizza. Oh, here we go. Thank you very much. Nice job. You know, uh, if when you're gambling you use ordinary casino chips, you can lose the thrill of gambling with real money. So why not recapture that excitement with these reminder chips? See? They say things on there like gifts for the kids. You'll have a clear-cut picture of your disintegrating life. Christmas gifts for the kids. Mortgage on trailer. Next month, groceries. <laughs> Braces for Susie's teeth. Mom's gallbladder operation. And the list goes on and on. Paul, the list goes on, on and on. And on. And on. And on, and on. on and on. On and on. Thank you. Oh, I got gambling money. <laughs> You know, if, uh, if your favorite things are, are fresh nuts and reminiscing about Frank Sinatra's fights with photographers, you're going to be delighted by this charming new kitchen tool. It's the chairman of the board and nutcracker. Here's how this works. Here's the, here's the camera. And there's... You know, uh, everybody likes to get a lot of mail, but... Apparently, that was just rented. Uh, everyone uh, likes to get a lot of mail, but who, seriously, who needs the drudgery of writing letters? If only there was a way to get a lot of letters back by sending only one. Well, there is now. If your town has one of these mailbox slot machines, let me show you how this works here. You just pull the lever on that. There you go. Pull the... Okay. Apparently, this is only rented as well. What do we... Is it plugged in? Turn on the power. We ready to go? We'll edit this right out. Oh, yes. Working like a top now. <laughs> Come to think of it, it's working. It's working just like the actual postal department, isn't it? It's a... <laughs> we'll come back to this one, because this is such a powerful joke. <laughs> it, can, it can sustain this, this minor screw-up. So we'll, we'll work on this and come back, right? All right. How does a, a normal-sized guy make an impression on a leggy six-foot Las Vegas showgirl? Oh. It's, thank you, it's easy <laughs> if you have a smooth line of patter and a pair of these powerful... Yeah, a pair of these powerful pneumatic shoes. Larry, show the folks how the pneumatic shoes okay. work. Here we have the, the lovely statuette showgirl. Hey, babe. I live next door to Shecky Green. <laughs> He's working now. Right again? Yeah, working, working perfectly. Thank you very much, Larry. Nice to see you. Uh, you know, uh, carrying your chips around in one of those ugly plastic cups is so tacky, uh, but wh what can you do to avoid bulging pockets? Well, here, you can do this. Simply entrust your chips to Mr. Las Vegas himself with this Wayne and Newton chip dispenser. <laughs> Do what, Paul? Oh, they are going to come out to work on it? Okay. Well, we're only going to be here a week. I know. <laughs> <laughs> help me, please. Someone here, help me. <laughs> now, there's no arguing. That is entertainment, isn't it? Right after... How's it going, Gordon? We all right? Got a short there? Okay. Finally, the technology, the, uh, technology of the Las Vegas showroom has been brought to bear on the problems of home pest control. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is the Siegfried and Roy Beyond Belief Roach Motel. <laughs> now, here's how it works. The roach, which you see right down in there, the roach right there, crawls inside. Let me put him right inside. <laughs> Older roaches, you may have to help inside. <laughs> and, and then, presto, it's magically transformed... 
into a lovely tarantula. See, there's the... Is this next? Oh, no, this one's next. I get a feeling this one's not going to work either. I just, I have a hunch there may be a problem over here. Uh, you know, whenever Welsh super, superstar Tom Jones appears in Las Vegas, he is bombarded with underwear from worshipping female fans. So how, how can you be sure that, that your intimate apparel will ever reach the stage? Well, it's... It's, <laughs> oh, it's, it's gone nuts! <laughs> Wait a, hold it, it's, it's got a mind of its own, it's just... Five grand, right here. Uh, okay, so you want to make sure that your intimate undergarments uh, reach the stage when you go to see a Tom Jones concert. How do you do it? Well, you do it with this, the brand new Tom Jones Panty Zooka. Bring it out. Come on out. Here's the Panty Zooka. Here, let me hold it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, there you go. Fire away. Whoa! <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I think this may have been triggered. We'll just try it anyway. Uh, no trip to Las Vegas would be complete without a historic Hoover Dam visit. Well, here's a way to relive the excitement of your vacation in your own dining room. It's the Hoover Dam Chowder Crock. Okay, boys. Open the floodgates. Yeah, that's... Oh, there it goes. I, you know, I think this rehearsal has been helpful. <laughs> uh, we all set, Paul? Yeah, we're we got ready. a great show, folks. Thank you very, for, uh, very much for showing up. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Welcome back to the show. Stick around, ladies and gentlemen. We're not going to pay the band. <laughs> but seriously, I got uh, gambling money. My first guest tonight... You know, I did. A couple of weeks ago, I actually won $800,000 playing <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, yesterday, afternoon playing roulette, I won a 2,000-acre ranch. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, I, can't, I can't lose. Uh, our first guest tonight is a star of a show called Jubilee that takes place uh, right here. Where are we, Paul? This is the Zigfield Room, isn't it? Yes, indeed it is. The Zigfield? Zigfeld? Yes. Zigfeld Home Room of the right Jubilee here show. at uh, Bally's. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome crossbow artist Hans Pantar. Hans? <laughs> yeah. Hi, Hans, how are you? Nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Hans Pantar. You know, you're, you're dressed like a crossbow artist. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you, you, how long have you been doing the show here at Valley? You are dressed like my assistant. <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. Now, tell the folks what we're going to do here, Hans. Okay, I want you to stand here just like that. Uh -huh. Like, just like that. <laughs> All right. Is this something you do every night? Yeah, I do this twice at night. You do it twice a night? Here at Bally's. Here at Bally's. Don't you want to chat a little bit before we get right into the... Uh... <laughs> how long have you been doing this, Hans? Uh, twice. twice every night. I know, but how long have you been <laughs> Paul, keep an eye on Hans, will you? Yeah. But how long have you been doing it? 15 years. 15 years. How did you start doing this? I bought a crossbow in a store. <laughs> <laughs> bought a crossbow in the store, Paul. <laughs> well, you're you're going to need a much bigger balloon. Uh, you got to spread it, David. All right, so you just put it in there. 
Okay. All right. Here we go. Now, what are you doing, Hans? Uh, uh, now, you're not actually going to shoot that at me, are you? Or the balloon? No. I'm going to shoot it around you. No, 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 <laughs> no. I'm sorry, because I, I don't think I'll stand here. No, I'm not going to. Now, am I supposed to stand here? Is that the deal? Huh? No, I'm not standing here. I can move? I'm going to move. Right, do you have something to shoot at, Hans? Stay right there. No, I'm not going to stand right there. I'm not. Okay. I'm, in fact, I'm standing over here. <laughs> I'll be over here with Hans. Oh, jeez. One question, folks. How much did you pay for the tickets? <laughs> okay. All right, Hans, here we go. All right, I'll try it without you, okay? Hans Pontar. Now, we, we have another one we're going to do here? Yeah, I'll do one more. Okay, do one more. Hans I'll do it with my wife, of course. She's going to do it, as a matter of fact. Maureen, nice to have you here. How long have you and Hans been married? Ten years. Ten years? All right. Do you enjoy this kind of work, Maureen? Sometimes. Now, now are, are, are you actually getting arrows shot at you there, or is that just like a trick or something? No, ha right. Have you ever been injured doing that? Yes. And, and badly? Stitches. Really? Stitches? Mm -hmm. and, and then that doesn't bother you? Well, I did at the time. Well, <laughs> and, and what did you do before you uh, had this job? I was a nurse. Mm -hmm. Well. <laughs> okay, what are we going to do now? Got the, the blindfold out? Yeah, just watch. Okay, I'll just... <laughs> Over here with Paul and the band, I think. I think Hans is a little goofy. <laughs> it's safe. <laughs> All right. Oh my God, jeez. Let's go out in the desert looking for rabbits later, Hans. Oh no. Did you, did you all get the free uh, prime rib? Yeah. Good, good. Uh, our next guest is a uh, very funny and uh, strange, peculiar man who first played Las Vegas way back in 1963. Oh, yeah. Yep, he has starred uh, on TV's May, a $1.98 beauty contest in Hollywood Squares. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rip Taylor. <laughs> for gambling, had to use that damn joke, too. Ah. You think this coat's a little busy? <laughs> it's like Liberace threw up on the damn thing. Anyway, good evening. Please laugh, folks. I just had my damn tubes tied this evening. <laughs> Come on, I laughed when you came in, Gee. 
For the children now, Captain Six Packs in town. <laughs> They're blind on that side, gee. Hope a dog in heat falls in love with your shin. That'll wake you up. <laughs> Look at this, the odd couple. <laughs> Can you see in the back? Hello? <laughs> Never seen dead people sitting up, gee. <laughs> Wait just a second, now I got the damn chair. Notice the glove? Michael Jackson. I'm using his shampoo, head and smolders. <laughs> Can you see this? It's a shoehorn. <laughs> it's a shoehorn. <laughs> Folks, I don't dance. This is it, you see. Go down the morgue and toe tag yourselves. Jeez. Look at this. Palm Springs. <laughs> Palm Springs. <laughs> Tell this side. I know it's funny. Look at this. Pantyhose. <laughs> Pantyhose. 14 bucks for that piece of crap, too. I'm getting nervous. I got a tinkle. <laughs> the hell is this? Uh huh. Blazing saddles. <laughs> that was a fast horse out of town. Gee, I got money to gamble. I'm gonna smack him in a minute. <laughs> Spring chicken. <laughs> Spring chicken. <laughs> Folks, I heard Ors what's the name? Oh, Oral Roberts almost died. The check bounced. Ha, 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 ha. Cups and saucers. <laughs> Takes time. I know what you're saying. I know what you're... This lady here, I found these in the hall. She here? Miss. Like, miss. Kino. Miss. You notice the ring? My mother-in-law died left me $12,000 to get her a stone. <laughs> she would have loved this. We buried her face down. Let her dig her way out. Now that, listen, I want to thank you very much. Here's the last joke. Now, okay, just a second. Here's a booby trap. <laughs> a booby trap. That's it, Paul. Thank you. Thanks for being thank on the you, show. Thank you very much. You're a very busy man. Spent a lot of your time writing old material. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I had money to gamble yeah. with it, Paul. So thank you very much. What, uh, what's, what's new? What's coming I'm up for you? I'm doing Sugar Babies, Atlantic City at Harris. I had 10 weeks with Carol Lawrence. When did that begin? Uh, the end of June. Right. Civic Light Opera, Long Beach. And then I got Rips Rugs, Tailor Made. I'm no, just doing a lot of really things. Really? Actual wigs you're selling? Didn't you know it? The man is bald, Dave. Eh? <laughs> no, I would never. You first, lady. You take it off. <laughs> Rip Taylor, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. You take it off. Thank you, David. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Show we this. We'll be right back. Show Rip this. Taylor. <laughs> Taylor showing uh, the same hair. Right. <laughs> uh, nice oh. to have you here, Skylark. Thank oh, you very much. David Letterman, nice to have you and your Thank whole you. crew We're out here. A great time. Welcome to Las Vegas. Thank you. Paul, Paul, cha cha cha. <laughs> nice to see you, Skylark. Oh. Now, uh, Skylark, tell us a little bit oh. about the, the review down at the Slipper. What, what do you do? Down? Right. Well, I do. I'm sorry, I'm out of breath. That's all right. Running that whole way. Uh -huh. uh, I do a little <laughs> tribute. Do a little tribute to uh, one of the most beloved entertainers in the whole business. Someone who's very familiar to your show sure. here to the fabulous Chris Elliott. Oh, that's great. <laughs> now, if he was never born, there'd never be a Skylark. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> now, uh, so you're actually a Chris Elliott impersonator. Now, how did you start doing this? Well, actually, I started when I was very young, actually. When I was about 12, I started dressing like Chris. Uh -huh. and, and was that a little, a little disturbing to your parents? <laughs> right, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, uh, Skylark, the, the resemblance is uncanny. You yeah. look just exactly, except, right. except for the eye makeup. I'm not sure that's uh, right. Oh, well, I also do a tribute to Judy Garland. Oh, it's I see. It's sort of a two-in-one. Uh, oh, it's, nice. it's a two-in-one tribute. I think you have a... There I am. Oh, yeah. That's you. Yeah. Oh, 
you look fantastic. That's just great. And this is me without any makeup. This I think you have one. Yeah, that's me. That's amazing. Now, and what was the hardest thing about uh, learning how to do Chris Elliott? Well, he has a very deep guttural voice. Uh -huh. I had to learn that. And also his stomach uh -huh. was kind of difficult to get. But I got that. Well, you seem to <laughs> have that right on the money. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much for dropping by. You're, you'll be at the uh, Silver Slipper through uh, Labor Day I'll or something. I'll be at right? the Slipper, but uh, also next weekend I'll be appearing at the Desert Road Mall as uh, a McGruff the Crime Dog. Oh, and that. you can see me there anytime you like. But, you but Dave, really, yeah. you should come down and see us at the Slipper. I'd, I'd love to come down, but you know we're very busy here this week with the show and so forth. No, I'm serious. You should come down and see us at the show. We'll, we'll see if we can't work that in, ladies Mark. and gentlemen. Skylark, ladies and gentlemen. Unbelievable. Skylark. two guests are two gentlemen who pretty much define the special quality that makes Las Vegas, Vegas. Here now are some highlights from their television program, Live from Las Vegas. Hi, I'm Tony Sacker. And I'm Robert Sacker. And we'd like to welcome you to our show, well, Live from Las Vegas, Vegas no produced audio. from the entertainment capital of the world. It's great being here in Las Vegas. Fun, sun, excitement. Please welcome Mr. Red Fox. <laughs> Mr. Mel Tillis. Yeah. The Saka Twins. Which one is it, Robert? Which one is Tony? My name is Robert. Robert, nice to meet you. My name is Tony. Tony, nice to see you. And am I pronouncing the last name correctly? Saka. Saka. That's right. All right, now, now tell me a little bit about your history here in Las Vegas. How long have you been here? What exactly do you do besides the uh, TV show? Uh, we've been living in Las Vegas for five years. Now, where exactly do you live? Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. But I mean, like, can I have oh, your home fine. address? Oh, originally <laughs> in South Philadelphia. So, okay, but where, where in Las Vegas do you 60 live? <laughs> Paul, send a car out there now, will you? We'll loot the place. We're right on that. Uh, all right, so, and your performers, in addition to your TV show, tell me about the act that you do. Go ahead. Go ahead. First of all, I want to tell you, David, I just want to just say that... You, I, ha you guys have an act. I, right? just, I, want to, I just want to tell you that I happen to be six minutes older than my brother. You're you identical know. twins. Yes. yes. Yeah. There is a difference, though. Way, it's a way to tell us apart. Well, what would that be? See, I have a mustache. I don't. Wow. <laughs> wow. Somebody. And we're, we're performers in this town five years. We work. And this we... is kind of the thing that people would see if they came. <laughs> <laughs> That's our closer. Yeah, yeah. But tell me about the act. Now, what do you do? Folks come in. What oh, do you do? Uh, we sing. Uh-huh. Sing. We... Tell jokes. Sometimes. Yeah, okay. Now, t tell me about the TV show that we saw there. The TV show is called Live from Las Vegas. Uh -huh. and we feature the headliners that work in this town as well as the specialty acts and lounge performers. Right. All sorts of entertainment that come to town because Las Vegas is the entertainment capital of the world. And we get... And you guys really epitomize and represent the spirit, the heart and soul of this town, don't you? Well, I'll tell you something. Yeah. Spiritually, yeah. we do. All right, now tell me, about the, tell me about the song. It's the unofficial anthem of Las Vegas. You're right. It's the unofficial... You guys wrote the song. We wrote the song. Yeah. That's right. It's called Las Vegas, the greatest town around. All right, and, and we're going we're gonna to hear that, right? We're going to do a commercial, and we, then you guys are going to sing it for us, right? That is true. They, is that right? Okay. That's right. We'll do a commercial. And I just then, want to tell you, they, they put it in the time capsule for 100 years to be heard, by the way. Okay, great. Las Vegas. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll, uh, we'll be right back to dig up the time capsule. <laughs> Okay, now, performing their semi-official Las Vegas City song, Las Vegas, the greatest town around. And by the way, it's in the time capsule, Paul. Did you realize that? It's in right the here. time capsule. Once again, the Saka Brothers. What? There's no other place like Las Vegas to see. There's no other place like Las Vegas to be. Where beautiful mountains surround the town. Your dreams and fantasies are all around. The lights are so bright, they stand so high in the sky. To let you know there's gonna be a show in Las Vegas. What a town. With dancers and singers, electricians, musicians. For the cameras and drummers, they work like the beast To make this place for all of your needs 
There's no other place like Las Vegas, I say. There's no other place like Las Vegas today. The hotels and motels are the best around. You are a guest in the very best hotel. The streets are so bright, whether day or night. This is the place where you can set your own face in Las Vegas, one a town. You can wine and dine at the finest. Relax, enjoy the kindness. But this is a town with a very big crowd. The kind of town that's fit for a king. So wherever you go, you will always know that there's no other place like Las Vegas. It's a sun town. It's the kind of town where people live all around. It's Las Vegas. It's a long Seriously, aren't these fabulous babes? Yeah! <laughs> uh, okay, we're nearly out of time. Let me, uh, let me thank everybody who was here tonight. Of course, Hans Pontar with his uh, crossbow, Rip Taylor, and uh, Tony and Robert Saka, who later in the week can be seen wandering nude in the desert. So. Uh, also, my thanks to uh, Bill Wendell, Paul Schaefer, and the wonderful band, David Sanborn, and everybody else. And uh, tomorrow on the program, be here. Sammy Davis Jr. will be back. All right. In New York, muggings are permitted on the north side of the street. Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. It's low. Please welcome Late Night Strongman. Hey! I'm, I'm glad you folks are in a great mood because, coincidentally, you're looking at a guy who has never, ever been in a, in a better mood, and I'll tell you why. I live near a little mall, a little shopping mall, and uh, they were having a contest for the last, I guess, five or six weeks to name, give a name to the new tobacco shop that's opened up there in the mall, and they announced the winners today, and I'm happy to tell you that I placed third with Mr. Pipe. <laughs> Third with Mr. Pipe. Proud of you. Thank you very much. Proud. Uh, Bishop Tutu is in uh, Washington, D.C. He met with uh, President Bush. And in fact, I guess uh, for the meeting, President Bush also took along Vice President Quayle. And he said later he thought it would be fun for Dan Quayle to try to pronounce uh, the name Tutu. So that was the uh, point of that meeting there. Just... <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, earlier tonight, like I need to tell you, the home viewer, earlier tonight on ABC there was a, uh, a news special. I thought this was uh, interesting. And uh, the whole idea of the special is, what would life be like here in America in the year 2039? And they were able to, I guess using computers, that's, that's how you do everything now, Paul. Uh, yes, yeah. yes it they is. They were able now to project and conjecture about life in this country in the, the year 2039. Have I set it up enough yet? Yes. <laughs> Here's, here were some of the stunning results. First of all, in that year, they think that uh, heart disease will have been eliminated. Yeah. And they also believe that the population will have doubled. And they also believe that the Exxon president will be saying, yeah, we should have this Alaska thing cleaned up any day now. So, thank you very much. God bless you, everybody. Good night. Drive safely. Thanks for watching.
Here's uh, over. Oh, man, look at this show. Good evening. Hi. Good evening, David. How you doing? I'm doing marvelous. Good. Nice to see you. You know, I had I, I was uh, having lunch by myself and, and was joined by a, a lovely gal, strange gal, uh -huh. eating at the bar. Gal came down, sat down, and said, do you ever find that when you're on TV, people tell you a lot of personal things? Right. Do you find that? Because I find people tell This gal was tired to talk uh, gynecology with me. Oh, stop. And I... What? No, you're kidding. You're making yeah, this up. Yeah, absolutely. No, she was. Just she picks the right doctor and things like that. You know, you got to have the right guy, and a guy's got to want to. It was a nutty uh, lunch. <laughs> but I wanted to ask you something. Yes, yes. I know. This since last night has been bothering me. You said something to me last night. You said, "Ask me tomorrow night." Excuse about me, Paul. The... Fifty-three minutes left in the show. Okay. Fifty-three minutes Where do left I find? in tonight's broadcast. Yes, Paul. What about the garage door? I can't thing? tell you now because you've told us that little no, story about no, the woman no, you no. met there's in the bar. No, there's still time. What no, I know there's no time. Maybe tomorrow. You know, only night. one of us gets to tell a story. In, well, in the whole show? we got a big show tonight. Didn't you see the big show That's card? It's huge. Yes. <laughs> you know something? I don't know how many of you folks are visiting from other cities, visiting from out of town, but the weather in New York City today is without a doubt one of the nicest days you'll ever experience. Anyway, beautiful, spring-like, sunny, clear skies. In, in fact, it's so nice. I think what we need to do, Hal, are you in there? Yeah, Dave. You know, Hal, what we should do now before uh, it gets too far on into the season, we really ought to put up the screens. Uh-huh. Could you... <laughs> could you... Wait, wait a minute, Hal. Did, did something go wrong you're not telling us about? No, no, I just came in. That's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Hal just got in. Yeah, Hal, so maybe we should do that now. Put up the old screens. Okay, here they come. Okay, great. We're going to... There, perfect. <laughs> Screens and others. All right, all right, Hal, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Very much. Boy, you can't buy comedy like that these days, can you? Uh, let's do. Uh, oh, this is nice. We haven't done this in a, in a couple of months. New dial-it services, Paul. Oh, I love this feature <laughs> of the show. That's right. These are brand new. Like you dial and you get the dial a joke. Yeah. Uh, dial the weather, dial your horoscope, dial These are recipes. Some, some new dial it services. Well, sure, look at this. I have quite a... <laughs> you not you have to tell when you run your hands over a screen I, like I that? I have quite a packet of new dial right Fabulous. here. New dial services, and we're going to present them uh, to the studio audience and also the home viewers as well tonight. Let's do it Very now. Nice. All right. So I just, I guess this is how we do this. I just pick up the phone here. You actually dial on the phone. Yeah, you have to dial it. Nice. It would be... <laughs> be no other way to get them if you didn't dial them. Right. I mean, maybe through the mail, but who has that kind of time? Really? <laughs> well, good luck. Here's uh, one that's as fresh as today's headlines. Dial the Exxon shareholders meeting in Parsippany, New Jersey. Oh, okay. That's, that's taking place over there today, all day long. All right, so let's see. put that down. This is Dial the Exxon shareholders meeting in Parsippany, New Jersey. Oh, there it is right there. All the right, who had the margarita? Bloody Mary? And I got a vodka and tonic and a gin and tonic. And who had the bourbon straight up? Last Friday night, single-handedly with my car, I closed a parking garage. That's all I can tell you. you. What do you mean you closed it? Well, I made a mistake, and the gate that opens and closes when you go in jammed on my car, and, <laughs> and they had to shut down for like three weeks to repair really? this. Your car was jammed in the, in the parking garage door. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, followers of world events will be interested in this one. Dial a real cocky Panamanian presidential candidate. <laughs> Right there. I don't even, you know, I don't really need to be here for this. We just put him up on the screen. <laughs> Dial a real cocky Panamanian president. This is a, this is a tough one. We're going all the way to Central America here. It's a very long number. <laughs> there's your international code, and then there's the satellite transponder. And all right, that should be it. Right down there to Panama. Oh, you couldn't hit the side of a barn. Did you get that one, Paul? I think I did, yeah. Yeah. He's cocky. Being clubbed. He's yeah. jogging? He's cocky. He's what? Cocky, didn't you say? Oh, He's cocky, a, yeah. that's right. He was cocky. Yeah. Uh, here, Being beaten up. Though. Here's one of my favorites. Dial, or dial a really dumb guy telling his friend about a National Geographic special that he has seen on television. Wow, look at this one. Okay. Really dumb guy talking about a National Geographic special he's seen on TV the night before. Smart. They use radar. Them 
bats are smart, they use radar. And uh, if you're just joining us for the first time and you have no idea what that means, we have this uh, helpful little videotape we've put together for you. Them bats is smart, they use radar. Bat Go ahead. navigates itself and locates prey by using a system called echolocation. By emitting a sound that strikes an object and comes back, the bat determines what the object is and where it's located. Damn. <laughs> You know, them bats is smart. They use radar. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. That's me, Paul. That's me as the dumb as guy. As the dumb guy. Yeah, yeah. That and was it was also problem. me there on the other end of the phone. Why did I do it? Go ahead. Ask me why I did why it. Why did you well, do it? Well, as always, I fell in love with the script. I, Thank I you. See. Uh, here's one for uh, sports fans. Dial the guy who has to guard Michael Jordan. <laughs> Chicago Bulls. Dial the guy who has to guard Michael Jordan. Here we go. There's the first ring. Darn. Nuts. Stop. Oh, not again. Uh, here's one for the child in all of us. Dial Santa in the off-season. Here we go. Dialing Santa in the off-season. Now we're doing on time, because last night's show was right on time. I want tonight's show to also be right on time. I don't think this call... Oh, there's... <laughs> it went through. Do you know what month it is? What the hell is wrong with you? Are you a kid? What's your name? This Christmas, you are going to be the sorriest little bastard on the face of the earth. Uh, Can, can we skip any of these dialects? We can skip some dialects. Okay, well, well let's don't skip the next one. <laughs> I don't even know why I bothered if we're not skipping it. Oh, if you're interested in the upcoming projects of one of America's great entrepreneurs, uh, you might try this one. Dial the plans of a New York tycoon and visionary. New York tycoon and visionary, Paul. Arc de Trump. The Taj Mahal, Trump, the Trump Wall of China, Mount Trump Moor, the Leaning Tower of Trump. No, oh, I think we'll be all right. Here we go. If you're fascinated by life under the big top, and who isn't, by the way, uh, then you won't be able to dial this one quickly enough. Dial Gunther Gable Williams Retirement Party, ah. the world's greatest animal trainer, animal retiring. Trainer. This would yes. be his retirement party. We can dial right into the party. Here we now. go. Let's place that call now. The count is six from the bottom. And today's movie is Road to Singapore. Here we go. Gunther Gable Williams. Not exactly sure I get that. Message units. Uh, and finally, and right on time. My gosh, this is the on time show. Perfect. Uh, here's a uh, dialect sir. What? What happened? What happened? What? Oh, there it is. Uh, here's a dialect service that lets you in on the inner workings of this very program. Hmm, do we want to do that one or do we want to? Let's do number nine. Since we're a little late. Nine? Nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Okay. <laughs> Number nine. Uh, before you make your summer plans, you'll want to try this Dial America's hottest vacation destination. Or, as we know it, number nine. <laughs> America's hottest vacation destination. Take I to Connecticut. Follow Route 7, which you take north to exit 18. Take a right on the exit ramp. Follow the road a half a mile. The mailbox says Letterman. You can stay in the house, camp in the yard, swim in the pool. What the hell? Sorry, we 
<laughs> Should have been number eight, I think. But the important thing is we're right on time. Let me we have a, uh, I think, a pretty good show here tonight. Rock that, in fact, we're not on time. We're a little over? We're a little over a minute and a half. Late. We're late. That's right. And you know what happens when we're not on time? What does happen? The next day, kids are late going to school. That's right. <laughs> so we'll have to make it up. Let's do the top ten list and do it quickly. Uh, it's a great category tonight. This is one you might want to jot down, yes. Paul. Uh, top ten dog science fair projects. These would be projects that a dog <laughs> would do and take to a science fair? Kids, uh, the kids are already going to be late going to school now, Paul. All right. Here we go. Get it. Top 10 dog science fair projects. Number 10, water dish versus toilet bowl, a taste test. Uh, number nine, canine hallucinations and that tiny little chuck wagon. Number eight, the aerodynamics of sticking your head out a car window. Uh, number seven, using a particle accelerator to separate kibbles from bits. Uh, number six, because we can, why dogs lick themselves. Number five. But you know, Number five, symptoms of cirrhosis in Spuds McKenzie's liver. Number four, number four, the visible dissected cat. Number three, black Labradors, genetically better fetchers. Uh, number two, you know, if you, if you keep that up, the kids are never going to get to school. Uh, number two, a radar bitch finder. Number one. Number one, your master's leg, a study in friction. Uh, our first guest tonight is one of the uh, great American comedians. Uh, this man uh, begins uh, filming for Paul Mazursky's new movie soon, I guess. It's called uh, Enemies, A Love Story. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to this program the Friars Man of the Year, Alan King. Oh, Alan. Tell us about the uh, Man of the Year honors. This takes place, obviously, once a year. Yeah, but they announced it January 16th, and the columnist said, what did he do so good in 16 days? Uh -huh. <laughs> but it's an honor every year. <laughs> and, um, Have you won it before? In 1971, mm -hmm. when I deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> and now, was that a pity? No, no. Oh, yeah, the home is waiting, you know. The <laughs> saliva is starting to run down the mouth now. And uh, it's a great honor, but uh, of course, uh, it was unprecedented because I toastmastered my own dinner. And I heard that. There's a big dinner held at the Waldorf, right. thousands of people. 1,500 people, a day is 60 people. And you're being honored as and man I, of the year. And I said, the only way I'll do it is if I get to invite the guests. I had to twist a lot of arms and kiss a lot of <laughs> you know. And <laughs> I got you everybody mean, You there. know. You said it to me like yeah. I would know about this. <laughs> Well, I've been watching your guest list lately. Oh, I see. And, uh, <laughs> and then I, I, I didn't want to MC it, but the honesty is no comedian wanted to take the job. They said if it was a roast, they would do it. <laughs> but as a tribute, in all good conscience, they couldn't show up. <laughs> now, is that actually how it happened, or you demanded that you host your own no, show? No, I really reached out for some of my ex-friends. Uh -huh. And no, I... Uh, Actually, I, I thought it would be a little different, make yeah. it more of a party if I did it. Did you enjoy the evening? Yeah, it's probably the greatest night I, I think I've ever had, uh, both from a professional standpoint, from an emotional standpoint. Everybody was there that I wanted to be, yeah. and uh, Bob Hope was having his 86th birthday in Germany. Everyone on the dais was a part of my life. Yeah. You know. what, what was Bob Hope doing in Germany? Celebrating his 86th birthday for some reason. I don't know. Does he have ties to the mother country? <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, uh, Johnny Carson was very busy laying off that weekend. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, anyway. Cosby was giving a lot of money away on Saturday night. Uh, uh, so anyway, again, congratulations. Now, it was a you, great honor. you look differently to me than uh, the last time you were here. Well, you look I'm, a little, I, I, uh, I don't know what this is. I'm looking for a new image. This is, the reason I'm dressed kind of Western is there's a, a requiem tonight for Gabby Hayes that I want to be at. Ah. <laughs> No, I, how about Smiley Burnett? Does that get a bigger laugh? No. And and that's it. That's it. Just no, no, no. I'm really going to a Western bar mitzvah tonight. I see. Well, Gary Hayes, Smiley, Smiley Burnett, the bar, bar mitzvah. mitzvah always Boom. works. There ethnic, you go. ethnic, ethnic, ethnic. Hip doesn't work. Yeah. Ethnic, uh, ethnic, ethnic. But you look. You also look like you might have lost some weight. Have you dropped some pounds? No, no. I just got a new tailor. Uh huh. And, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I, I've given up on I've lost a thousand pounds of my life. No more. Yeah, that's no more. tough, isn't it? It's, it's hard, hard to do. I yeah. went with uh, yeah. Stillman diet with the uh, eight glasses of water a day. I lost 11 pounds in three weeks, but I was wetting the bed. Which yeah, that's no, see, that's no good. A grown man wearing pampers is not, yeah. you know. <laughs> and, uh, no, I just had no ex. I saw you backstage with the football and the and the sweatpants. Do uh -huh. you do a lot of that, athletics? Well, I dress myself, if that's no. what you're getting at. <laughs> My father died a year and a half ago at 96. He never owned a pair of sneakers. Is that right? Never. Never had a hockey puck. 96. Had... That's right. Yep. And he said that you never run when you can walk. Right. And you never walk when you can be sitting down. Right. You know? <laughs> so he conserved himself, and it worked out pretty That's well. 96. Yeah. And, and you know how many people that Jane Fonda killed with that cassette of hers? <laughs> <laughs> Dropping like flies. Uh, well, I tell you what, we have to do a uh, commercial. Let For the first Lovely time. woman, eh? If my wife looked like her, I'd never get dressed. <laughs> What does that mean exactly? I don't know. Just, <laughs> my wife. There's a rhythm to it. <laughs> no, I like that. You got a rhythm. <laughs> uh, no, Smiley Burnett wouldn't get dressed. No, but it's no. right. No, it's, there's a rhythm. That's what comedy's all about. Did uh, now you've been married um, quite a while. Forty-three years. And you talk about weight, losing weight, and diets and so forth. Did did you? Is your wife the kind of woman that uh, is a? Uh, does she cook? Is she the one who does the? No, cooking no, no, the no. It's the old joke. If she didn't have to go through the kitchen to get to the garage, she'd never be in that mm -hmm. room. <laughs> That's not on the note, but I, the computer tells me. I see. Uh, Has comedy changed lately? <laughs> That's what the note says. Uh, hell, we must well, be later than I thought. He's asking his own <laughs> questions now. Uh, well, what do you think? Has it? Well, in the last 25 minutes it has, I'll tell you that. <laughs> has it been an improvement? I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. I just have a feeling that... I, it was tougher, I think, when you started well, it out. It wasn't tougher. I think there was more camaraderie. There was, a, you know, there was more time to develop. You do five minutes on your show or Johnny's show, and you're directing your first picture. You know. Yeah, I mean. yeah, yeah. Seems it, to happen quicker now. And uh, I think the uh, mortality rate is going to be higher. Yeah. Because not enough training, and I think there was something that I think the young comedians miss, and that's our camaraderie. The guys, the jokes. We we were together all the time because we were all failing. We all sat around in cafeterias, you know, and at the drugstore counter, yeah. and did crazy things. Uh, there's a, a legend, you know, Gene Bayless. Uh, you, more people know Smiley Burnett in this audience. <laughs> but Gene Bayless was a very funny young, still around, and he drove a cab on the side, you know, did a couple of one-nighters, and he finally got to play the lowest state. And we were all living at the Bryan Hotel. This is in the 40s, and we were four in one room. Dean Martin, Henny Nadell, the comedian, Sonny King, the singer, and I, in one room. Mm -hmm. And Bayless finally got to play the lowest state. And only friends would do a thing like this. He asked if he could stay over so he wouldn't be late for his rehearsal at 7 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And we put him in a tub. That was the only place he could sleep. <laughs> and with a slow drip. And uh, the phone rang. He put him at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock in the morning, the phone rang. Dean Martin picked it up. And the an operator said, it is 6 o'clock in the morning. And Dean said, what? 8.30? And Bellis was halfway down Broadway in his underwear before he realized there was nobody in the street. That was love. That was fun. Yeah. That showed you we can. So the biggest day of his life, when he should right. be well rested, he gets no sleep. Well, that's fun. Yeah. That was what we cared about each other. And you know, no one does practical jokes anymore. I've seen that. Uh, over, you know, you do something, and sometimes you set up a joke for a month, but mm -hmm. nobody has the time anymore. They're yeah. busy with well, running. Well, we've become a very litigious society. Whatever that means, Thank I agree you very completely. Much. Yeah. And it's a religion. <laughs> but, all right, I know what I'm going to do. Is that the No, do you have yeah. an example of a practical joke? perfect group? example. Okay, good. <laughs> there was a man about town named Harry Morton who's long retired in Florida. He was an agent and handled a lot of comedians. Mm -hmm. And he was probably the funniest single individual. Not jokes, but crazy a things. Funny man, an entertaining for real. guy yeah. to be around. Entertaining yeah. and practical joke. Sure. And he lived in Oceanside, Long Island, and he owned a lot of crazy cars in those days. He'd put two cars together. <laughs> and there was a man and there was a man working for the telephone company next to him, and a Volkswagen had just come out. Uh -huh. And every day he'd come over to Harry. It was what we call a civilian, uh -huh. you know. And uh, he came over to Harry and says, you think I ought to buy the Volkswagen? Harry said, what do I care what you buy? And sure. I'd drive into New York every day. I lived in the next town. He said, I got this nut next door. It's driving me crazy. He says, I'm going to fix him. And what actually happened, Harry Morton's son was working in a neighborhood gas station. He said to his kid, one after the man had bought the Volkswagen, 
He said, bring a can of gas. And when the guy was asleep, two in the morning, he filled up his tank. Mm -hmm. Next day, the guy drove all day, came back. He said to his kid, bring another can of gas. <laughs> For one week, <laughs> he filled up the guy's gas tank, and the guy was saying, Harry, you're not going to believe me. <laughs> Harry, I'm getting a hundred miles to the gallon. <laughs> and, and I would drive in, and you know, you have to have a witness to the punchline. Sure. So I said, what are you going to do now? That's funny. He said to his kid, bring a siphon. <laughs> the next night, the gas out. The guy went to the corner, stopped for light, out of gas. Uh. <laughs> well, he wasn't too upset after driving for a week. Sure. Filled it up. Next night, Harry took the gas out, went to the corner, out. The guy didn't know what to do. Harry says, we're going to take him to the Volkswagen agency. And we walked in on Sunrise Highway, and I was standing right there. And the man went over to the service department. He said, look, he said, I bought this car here. He says, for a week or 10 days, I was getting 100 miles to the gallon. <laughs> and, and we were gone. <laughs> so the guy said, well, why don't you leave the car now? You know. Yeah. I told this story this many years ago. I told the story on the Johnny Carson show. At one o'clock in the morning, there was a knock on Harry Morton's door, and the guy from next door walked in and punched him right in the mouth. Can't take a joke. Now that's a punch. Yeah, there you go. Pretty funny. Um, nice to see you. It's the man of the year, ladies and gentlemen, Alan King. What are I... Keep it going. Joe, what? What was that? Yes, Joe said right. keep it moving. So well, I have to. Okay. We're desperately late. How late are we, Joe? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, tomorrow, the show, they've returned now from uh, Russia, and I understand that they've just completed work on a television pilot which airs on this network next Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jerry Mulligan and Chris Elliott. So, good to see you. Welcome Hello. back. Thank you very much. Uh, and, and how was Russia? Russia was terrific. You yeah. know, your show is very big over there. Oh, I didn't even know we no, were there. No, it is. It's number one. In fact, uh, well, number one in its, in its time slot. Right. I think Regis <laughs> is uh, beating you out in Leningrad. Oh, is that right? Yeah, but that's, that's because that's where Kathy Lee's from. Uh, and uh, uh, what exactly were you guys doing over there? I didn't... Well, I'll take this one, Dave. It was okay. kind of an up with people thing. Uh, basically, just me and Chris and a couple of banjos. Uh -huh. uh, we gave up the first night, though. What happened? Well, Chris got drunk and I had an intestinal virus. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, but you were over there for quite a while. Did you have a good time at all? You know, one of the highlights, Dave, we had a chance to meet the uh, Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev and his lovely wife Ivana. I mm -hmm. think you have a picture of that. Uh, <laughs> there we are. <laughs> <laughs> now, Chris, it seems to me that you're standing there uh, meeting the, uh, the the leader of the Soviet Union, and you don't have a shirt on. Yeah, well, oh. <laughs> let me answer that, Dave. I played a little joke on Chris. Uh -huh. I told him not to wear a shirt to the dinner party. I see. I told him that's how they do it in Russia, and oh. uh, he believed me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, you guys have a brand new TV show. Right. Oh, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. Um, let me tell you a little bit about that. Dave, do you know the show Cops? Have I've heard of that, it, yeah, where they document sure. actual arrests oh, on the yeah. air like that. Yeah, as they occur. Yeah, those shows are very popular. Well, our show is basically a cheap rip-off of that show. <laughs> and so what you're saying is you guys travel around with the uh, New York City police guys and uh, follow them as they work in the city? <laughs> no, no, we go around uh, with the NBC security right here in this building. <laughs> I, think, I think if you want to, we have a clip. Uh, oh, great. Let's, take a look? Uh, sure, let's take a look at that. <laughs> Here we go. Ricardo, what are we going to see first? Well, I got a call that a woman needs assistance in this office down here. A woman needs assistance right in this office here. Okay, so we're probably going to see a little action then, so I guess we should go in on three. One, two, three. What? Watch it. Move it. Hold it. What? What is that? What is that, lady? What do you got there? What is that? It's white out. All right, we'll keep it where we can see it. Hold it right where we can see it. Did, did you need help? Did you want help? Yeah, I lost the keys to my... Something? I lost the keys to my desk drawer. Do you have them? What are you guys doing here? Well, Jerry and I are doing a little show where we go around with NBC security. What a stupid idea. Okay, we'll be right back after this word from Snickers. <laughs> That's pretty exciting. Good luck. Oh, thank Chris you Elliott, much, ladies please. and gentlemen. Jerry Mulligan. Nice, nice. We'll see you. 
a lovely and a talented actress who just completed a couple of years on the hit series, The Family Ties. <laughs> Her uh, upcoming films include the prize Pulitzer, and until we meet again, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one, the only, you love her, you know her, you can't live without her, Courtney Cox. Hey. How are you? Nice to see you. How's it going? How are you? We, uh, we, we talked to you a couple... What the hell did he say? We talked to you a couple of years ago, and at that time, I think you just started on Family Ties, and now, two years later, it's it's over. Was that was it a good experience? It was great. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And and you played the part of uh, you were Michael J. Fox's girlfriend. Girlfriend, yeah. Lauren Miller, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the other night they had their big final farewell show. Yeah, did, did, I heard you did something with that. We just had a little farewell. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. No, I didn't see it. Someone told me actually. Uh huh. Sure. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, and and how do you feel now that that's all behind you? I feel okay because I, um, I have a job, so it's okay. But what, what are you doing? What's the job? Um, till we, you just said. Oh, one of the movies? Again. Till yeah. we meet again? It's yeah. about what? It's a Judith Krantz novel. It's a, um, a mini-series, five-hour mini-series. About aliens? No. <laughs> are you sure? I'm positive. It's about three daring women. Mm -hmm. and From I'm, outer space. From outer space. <laughs> and I'm one of them. Yeah. And well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And uh, you just bought a new house? I did. I just bought a new house. Um, it was Carol King's old house. Carol King's been on the show many times. She has? Yeah. She's yeah. a really nice lady. Seems to be a nice person. Yeah. yeah. Um, she actually came to my house to see it after it's been a long time since she lived there. Where, where is the house? Um, should I give you the address? Yes, the address <laughs> and instructions on how to right. get there. Um, it's um, in Hollywood. It's in the Hollywood Hills right. on top of a mountain. Oh, very nice. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. Um, it's haunted, though. Haunted? Yeah, it has ghosts. And she came to my house one time. Um, to... <laughs> I don't know. I don't okay, know, I don't I don't know what happened. Yeah, they're making me nervous enough as it is. They don't I'm know I'm very why. nervous, my okay. own self. <laughs> Good. Um, anyway, uh, you she know, when you... Oh, never mind. Tell me uh, no. what... Sometimes when you move... No, I better not. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I had a feeling this was going to happen. I, I knew I was going to sit down. right down your dress. All right, <laughs> there. <laughs> Man. Okay, anyway, no, I'm sorry. Okay. So that's why I'm a little nervous. Forgive me. <laughs> For Don't being worry such a about dork. me. You do this every night, I'm and I'm sorry. wearying my straps I'm while I'm done. Okay. You look great, though. Did I mention that you look terrific? No, thank you. Okay, you have a big house in the Hollywood Hills. I have a house in Hollywood haunted. Hills. It's haunted. Mm -hmm. And Carol King came over to the house. This dress is haunted. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, uh, we're late. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Anyway, my house is haunted. She came over and she told me about these stories of how it was like there were really angry ghosts there and she had a guru come in and, and like calm them down. And she gave me this little thing, a seahorse on top of a seashell. And it was something just like a good omen to have around the house. So I put it on this table and I thought it was really nice of her. She left. And that night I come downstairs and I look on the table and the seahorse is gone. The shell's there. Wow. And really, I know. <laughs> come on, come on. Grow up, can we? Um, and, but anyway, you love the house, things are great. Do you have any pets? Um, yes. Actually, I think my dog ate the seahorses. That actually, we can finish that, but you oh, see, I'm just sorry. finished it Forgive for me. me. Okay. Uh, what kind of dog do you have? I have a border collie. Yeah. The border collies are very smart and, and driven, aren't yes. they? They're, they're always, they want to do something. They're supposed to be. Um, yeah. I got this dog from Wilford Brimley for my birthday, and he promised me. Wilford Brimley? Yeah. How, how did that happen? Um, I did Cocoon the Return with him. There you we go. We became friends. And he promised me I'd never have a, nothing but a border collie. They're the best dog, mm -hmm. so smart. They like to work. They like to get out there and yes. herd animals. Yes. Yeah. Well, my dog is not so smart. He, um, he like, I have a fern. If I had a fern hanging in the air, I like hanging, and I put it on the ground, he thinks that's a bush outside, and mm -hmm. he's on it. He's just not a really smart dog. Wait a minute. He also you eats a seahorse. You so. have a fern hanging in the air? No. Uh, and he, I don't geez, know, do I touch your also legs? Also kind of a contortionist then, isn't he? If he's, <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yeah, see, my dog's not really smart. They do like to stalk things. They go underneath um, furniture or anything and just like shake and stalk and look at other yeah, like yeah. animals. I have yep. another dog. They're, they're always, working, always working, always working. And, and so, uh, uh, what's next for you? Other projects after the uh, the big movies? Oh, um, the, the prize Pulitzer. How was yeah. that? It was good. I'm surprised you're not gonna like make fun of me with that, with the whole Pulitzer story. I know, David. Please, I'm so embarrassed as it is. You look at my strap. <laughs> you, you, you want some tape or something on that? <laughs> that's, that's my dumb guy. Okay. I've been working on a dumb guy. 
You look great. You look terrific. You have, you. You have beautiful blue eyes. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, and the, the Roxanne Pulitzer story is going to be on when? That's going to be, um, it's a ways, November. Always away? And so yeah. is Till We Meet Again. Yeah. They're both a ways away, yes. Well, but good. I dyed my hair red for this part that I'm doing now. Really? What color is it normally? My hair. Well, it looks great. Oh, you don't what, remember? What color is it normally? It's normally um, black. Uh, really? Is it black? <laughs> yes. I'm never wearing this dress again. I know that for now. <laughs> Uh, no, you look terrific, and I'm glad things are uh, going well for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. We got to go? We got to go. All right, this has been Courtney Cox. I'm, I'm sorry if I behaved like a jerk, no. but it is nice to see you here. And you have a story tonight that you didn't get to last time, and you didn't get to it tonight. What's the topic? Oh, it's not even funny now. But no, when you come back, when you come back, just give us the topic. The topic was um, talk show host. Talk show host. So, so the next you. time you're on, you can tell us okay. that story. All right, well, jot that down in your TV guide.